guys welcome back to another video and today we are going to be doing the most highly requested video on my channel I think ever we are going to be doing a brand new GFX tutorial for blender 2.8 I'll show you guys how to use a rig how to use HDRIs and all those things but I want to say a huge thank you to my friend VC he's the one who gave me the rig and this video is possible because of him so definitely be sure to check out his channel in the description below and the info card in the top right be sure to check out his channel and subscribe to say thank you for the rig because without it we wouldn't be able to make this tutorial so we're just gonna get started right away but if you guys are excited for this video please be sure to leave a like and let people know that you are excited but anyways we will just get started things you are going to need are Roblox Studio, Blender, and the rig. And the rig is titled Paint Rig V3. And I will have a link to download it in the description down below. So I'll have a link to download Roblox Studio, to download Blender, and to download the rig. So please be sure to check out the description for all the important things. So first we are going to be starting in Roblox Studio, but before we go into Roblox Studio, we need to make a folder that we are going to be keeping all our GFX files in. So what you want to do is right click new folder there and then you are going to name it whatever you want to I'll name mine new GFX tutorial so I remember what it is you can name it whatever you want to just be sure to name it something you will remember now we are going to go inside the folder really quick and make another folder inside new folder and name this one accessories and this is gonna come into use later while making the GFX just trust me so again, really quick, make a folder on your desktop for the GFX files, and again, on the inside, make a folder titled Accessories. So now we are done with that, so we are going to open Roblox Studio. So I'm just going to launch it really quick. Thankfully, it does not need to update. So now that we are in Roblox Studio, what you need to do is go to the top left corner and select New, and then select Base Plate. So you're just going to click that and open it up, and it should open an empty Base Plate world. So what you need to do to load your character is you need to go to the top and select Plugins, and then Load Character. If you do not have Load Character, I will show you how to get it very quickly what you need to do is go in the top left corner and select manage plugins then you are going to select the blue that says find plugins on the right and then it should open a roblox catalog page and then what you need to do is go down and select a load character it's very popular so it should be really close to the top and you are just going to hit this button that should say install and then just restart your roblox studio so you're just going to close out of it and reopen it and then you should have load character at the top all right so now that you have load character what you need to do is just click it and open it up and then you need to type in your roblox character's username that you want to make a gfx of so i'm going to type in my username pickles44456 and then what you need to do is make sure spawn at origin is clicked so it has the little x right here that's going to be very helpful later in the tutorial and then you're going to go down and hit spawn r6 you just click that and it'll spawn in your character so what you need to do is go on the right in the explorer if you do not have an explorer i'll show you how to open it really quick you are going to go to view at the top then select explorer right here in the top left and it'll open it for you so you're going to open your workspace right here with a little arrow right click your character and go down to export selection and then you are going to export in the folder that you just made so mine is called new GFX tutorial and you are going to export it as model or you can export it pretty much as whatever you want to just make sure it is something that you are going to remember so we'll hit save just like that and now what we need to do is get our characters hats and accessories for the GFX so what you want to do is use this little arrow right here to open up your character and you are going to delete the torso legs arms and head so you only have your accessories left and then you are just going to right click your character again export selection and then this time you're going to export in the accessories file so you're going to go in the accessories file and export and name it accessories just like that 
hit save and you are done. So now really quick, I'm going to be showing you guys how to add props or a set to your GFX if you do not know how yet. So what you need to do is go to the toolbox right here. You're just going to click this. So it's under view and then toolbox. Click this to open it. And then you have all these different items you can use. So you can look up anything you really want. You can look up a set. You can look up props. I'm going to look up a cake, for example. So we're just going to look up cake and you have all these different options. You have a Minecraft cake. You have realistic cakes. You have more cartoony cakes. I think we'll do this rainbow one. It looks very nice. So you're just going to drag that into your base plate and then it'll appear right here on the right. You're going to right click it just like that, like we did with the character earlier. Export selection, make sure you're in your folder, not the accessories folder, but just the normal folder. And you are going to name it whatever you want as long as you will remember it. So I'm gonna name it cake, cause it is a cake. We will hit save and we are done with that. So you're gonna repeat the process for however many props you need or whatever set you need, things like that. And after you're done with that, we are done in Roblox Studio. So you can just X that out. You do not need to save your base plate. So now that we are done in Roblox Studio, the next program we are going to be using is Blender. So make sure you have this rig file right here. Like I said, it's up for download in the description below. It is called Paint Rig V3. So you're just going to click that and open it up. And this is the brand new Blender version. So it looks kind of new, but we will be going completely through it so you can make your own render. So what you need to do first is go up right here in the note editor. You are going to click this little white icon right here. It should say open image when you hover over it. You're just going to click that and then find your GFX file. So we're going to go here and then here it is. So you're going to open the one right here that says your character's username one texture. So you're just going to click that and it should give your character texture. And the next thing you got to do is add your accessories. So to add your accessories, you're going to go in the top left and select file, import, wavefront.obj. And you're just going to find the file that has your GFX files. So you're going to open this and then open accessories this time and open accessories.obj. You're just going to open that up and your accessories should appear. So now we are going to need to put them on our character because obviously they're not in the right spot. So how you move in this new blender version, you are going to hit shift and then this key right here. I'm going to show it on the screen because I honestly don't know which one it is. And then it should put you in a free camera mode. You can use W, A, S, and D to move around. You can hold down shift to go faster or don't hold down shift and you will just go normal speed. Once you are in a position that looks good to you where you can see your character, you can just left click and then it'll put your mouse back in free mode. So now on the left right here, you are going to select move. And then with these tiny arrows down here, you are going to move your accessories to where they need to be. And there we go. So now here is our whole character and it is attached to the rig. Now really quick, what you want to do is shift, hold down shift and left click your character's head. So you have both the accessories and the head selected. They should all be lit up in orange. If they are not all lit up, then you can just use shift click to select all of them. Then you are going to go to edit in the top left, click that, go to operator search and then type in origin. And then you are going to select the one that says set origin, click that, and then click origin to geometry. And I know that's a lot of things, but pretty much what that's going to do is going to put the arrow in the character's head instead of down at the feet. So it's in the right spot now. So now we are going to be posing our character. So we are going to pose the head and then the body differently. So with the head, what you want to do while it's selected, move around with the same keys that we used before and you are just going to get in any area you want to to rotate the head. So pretty much when you rotate in Blender, it's kind of like a clockwise rotation. So if I am above the head, it'll turn it left to right. Or if I am in front of the head, it'll turn it again left to right, but sort of tilt it. All right, so with that knowledge of how rotating works, you're just gonna get wherever you need to be to rotate your character and pretty much rotate it however you want your character to be posed. Like I said before, hit R on your keyboard to rotate and then you're just gonna move your mouse to rotate it like a clock. And I think we'll also go above my character a little bit so she's looking a little bit to the right, just like this. And there we go, now our head is in the pose. 
All right, so now as you can see, our head is in the pose we want it to be in, and now we are going to pose the arms and legs. So what you need to do is click on the rig. You can click on any piece of it. It's one of these little blocks right here. I recommend clicking maybe around the head one. You are going to go down in the bottom left corner, click object mode, and go to pose mode. And now you are going to use the ones on the feet and the ones on the arms and just on the body in general to pose your character. So let's do the arms first. So again, we're going to rotate like going off of a clock. So we are going to bend the arm forward a little bit. So this is the elbow bend. And then this is the shoulder bend. So you can just bend your arms however you want to. Move around. And then bend it a little bit more if you want to. If you want to move them up or down, you just click move on the left right here. So you get the little arrow. And then you can move it. You can also rotate with it as well. But I prefer to rotate with the R key. So now we are just going to go to the other arm and do the same thing. So we are just going to go over and bend the arm again, thinking like the clock, bending the shoulder, and then I think we might make this arm actually go back a little bit. We'll just go to the front and look at it, maybe bend a little bit this way, and then hit move on the left side so we get the arrows. And now I think we will pose the legs. And also you can use this little one in the middle to bend your character a little bit, though I'd be careful with that one. Because if you bend your character, you also will need to go back into object mode at the bottom, click the hats, and bend the hats to go with your character. Just like that. So make sure you take that into account when you are bending the body. So if you use these bends on the body right here, you're also going to have to bend your accessories to go with it. So just remember that. Now we are going to do the legs. When you do the legs, what you need to do is click the one at the very bottom. And you do not use R for the legs. You use the arrow. So you're going to use the green arrow to take it front or back. The red arrow to take it side to side. And then the blue arrow to move it up and down. If you move it up and down, then it'll bend the knee. So like you can make it kicking out. And then if you bring the blue one higher... You can make it sticking up like that. Pretty much you're just going to mess around with it however you want your legs to be. So we're going to make it look like my character's walking a little bit. Just like this. Just going to bend them however we want to. And there we go. And now our character is posed. I'm just going to fix the accessories really quick. So we'll go back to object mode. Select the accessories. And maybe just move them a little bit so they fit better. There we go. And now we have our pose. If you want to load in your props or your set, what you need to do is load them in just like the accessories. So you're going to go to the top left corner, go to File, Import, Wavefront.obj. You're going to find the folder you made at the beginning of the video to save all your files in. Mine is called New GFX Tutorial. You're going to open that up and find all the props or the set that you saved. So mine is Cake. So you're going to open the Cake dot obj file so just whatever you save so if it's school a prop whatever you saved it's going to be the dot obj one you're just going to double click that and it'll open it up in blender so now you can just move it around with the move tool rotate it with the rotate tool or you can hit r on your keyboard to rotate so move it wherever you need to i'm just going to put it to the side because that is just for example i'm not going to make my character holding it and now I think we are ready to render. But first, we are going to be adding an HDRI. I made a more in-depth tutorial of how to get HDRI, so if you are interested, click the info card in the top right corner for a very in-depth tutorial of how to add HDRIs to your renders in Blender 2.8. But I will be showing you guys really quick how to do it. So you're going to go to your browser and open up this website. It is called hgrihaven.com. I'll have it linked down in the description below. You're going to select HGRIs and they'll have all these different types that you can select. I'm just going to pick the very first one. You're going to click it, scroll down, go to 4K, and then save it to your file that we made at the beginning of the video. You're just going to open it, save it like that. And then we're going to go back to Blender. So you're going to go on the right side of Blender right here. Select the little world icon and then open surface if it is not open with this little triangle. Then go to color, select the little dot, and then click environment texture. Click that. 
and then it'll give you new options. You're going to click the little folder that says open. When you hover over it, it says open image. You're going to open your folder you save the HDRI to and just double click it to open it. And then it should add it. So if you want to look at it, all you need to do is click this little icon down here to check. But first, let's save really quick. It's a really good idea when you're making GFX to save throughout the process because sometimes a blender will just get overloaded and then sometimes stop responding and close. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So definitely be sure to go up to the top, select file and then save and just hit save like that and then it'll be saved so if it does close you can go back to the last time you saved. So now we will be checking if the HDRI worked. We're just going to select this little icon down here and click that and it should take a second to load but then it'll show you the HDRI. So it looks like it did work which is very good. So we could just go back to the normal one. You can click the one right here to go back to the normal one and I think we might be ready to render. All right, so now that we are ready to render, one thing we need to do really quick is go on the right side of Blender again, select this little camera icon, and then change the render engine to Eevee. Because if you don't, then it makes your hatch transparent. I'm not quite sure why, but of course we want them to be a solid color. So make sure you change your render engine to Eevee. And now we are just going to be changing the size of the camera to whatever size you need it to be. So if you need your GFX to be an icon, I recommend 1000 by 1000 pixels, but really you need to Google whatever size you need it to be for what. So if you're making a YouTube banner, if you're making a computer background, you need to look up what size you need it to be. So I'm going to make mine 1000 by 1000 pixels. And now it is time to add our camera. So what you are going to do is hit Shift and A on your keyboard and select camera and it'll add it right at the bottom. How you access your camera is hit the zero on the number pad of your keyboard, or if you do not have a number pad, you will hit view at the bottom of the screen, and you will click cameras, and then set active object as camera. So you're just gonna use the same buttons that we used before to move around, and then you are just going to set up your camera where you want it to render. So we're just gonna set it probably right here, and I'm gonna adjust my accessories just a little bit more, so I'm going to left click them and then rotate them a little bit so they fit better. There we go. All right, so then when you have your camera all set up, you have your HDRI ready. The last step you need to do is go to your camera right here on the right side again. You are going to go down to film, click this little arrow to open it, and then select transparent, and that'll make your HDRI transparent in the background. So after we do all those steps, we are ready to render. So all we need to do is go up to the top, hit render, and then render image. And here is our final image. Now all you need to do to save it is go to the top right here, select image, then save, and then save it wherever you want to. I'm gonna save it to the same folder, so I'll just title it render, hit enter, hit enter again, and then it is saved to your computer in the folder you saved it to. And that is pretty much the whole tutorial. So I want to say thank you again to VST for giving me this rig so I can show it to you guys and you guys can make awesome GFX as well. If this tutorial helped you, please be sure to leave a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below and I will try to help you out. I try to respond to all my question comments, so definitely be sure to leave one and I will try to help you out. And also, if you are new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get future notifications whenever I post. But anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!